Kirk Rambis is a well-known figure in the NBA. He's a former player who's a four-time NBA champion with the Los Angeles Lakers. His resume is impressive when you just look at his accomplishments. When you start to look deeper, you see that he was a role player at best on those Lakers teams. Even though he was their starting power forward, he never averaged more than 7.5 points and 7 rebounds. For his whole Lakers tenure, which includes two final seasons of his career, he averaged 4.9 points and 5.5 rebounds, so nothing special really. In his best season with the Charlotte Hornets, he averaged 11.1 points and 9.4 rebounds. That was his max production. But I'm not here to bash his playing career. He's a champion. I'm here to talk about all his other roles in the NBA, how he sucked at them and how he irritates me that the Lakers are still listening to him even though his success would suggest otherwise. I'm absolutely sure that he's one of the main reasons why the Lakers struggled so much this season. There were many problems, yes, but if Kurt Rambis is the guy who overlooks everything, boy, you're in for a ride. So, Kurt Rambis retired as a player in 1995, but while still in his active playing career, he already started coaching the Lakers as a special assistant coach in 1994. He was the assistant coach for the Lakers till 1999, and then, after Del Harris got fired in the lockout shortened 1998-99 season, he took over as the head coach and led his team to 24 wins in 37 games, before being swept by the Spurs in the 1999 Western Conference semifinals. So, a winning record, right? Yes, but he had Jerry West as an executive, he had a 20-year-old Kobe Bryant who was rising as a player, a 26-year-old Shaquille O'Neal, in his prime basically, Glenn Rice, Eddie Jones, and even Dennis Rodman, who at 37 years old was still averaging 11.2 boards per game. Derek Fisher, Rick Fox, Robert Orty, do you get the picture? He should have achieved more. Next year, Phil Jackson becomes the head coach, and basically, with the same roster, the Lakers win the NBA title. Quite a difference, huh? But of course, Kurt Rambis is a Laker for life, so he's the assistant general manager during that season. And there you go, his first NBA championship as an executive. Next year, the Lakers win one more NBA title. Good job, and thank God they had Kurt Rambis. But the Lakers feel that their coaching staff isn't strong enough with Phil Jackson, so they hired Kurt Rambis as an assistant coach. The guy probably was tired of not receiving the necessary praise and his rightful share of fame. So still, with all the good players there, the Lakers win another championship, courtesy of their great assistant coach, Kurt Rambis. Rambis was the assistant coach in Los Angeles all the way till 2009. All seasons with a winning record except the 2004-2005 season when Phil Jackson wasn't the head coach. But that's just a coincidence, I'm sure. Phil Jackson returns and the Lakers go on their winning ways again, obviously with Kurt Rambis as the assistant. During this period, he interviewed for the Sacramento Kings head coaching vacancy in 2007 and 2009, but wanted more years and more money on his contract. Obviously, you're talking with a 7-time NBA champion if you count as every championship as a player, assistant coach and an executive. So after winning the second title as an assistant coach in 2009, Kurt Rambis decides, F it, I'll be the head coach now. He signs a contract for 4 years and $8 million with the Timberwolves. That was quite a high salary for a head coach back then. Ok, here we go, first season as an NBA head coach, what do we do? 20th in points per game, 29th in points allowed, 29th and 28th in offensive and defensive rating respectively, 30th in net rating, the second worst team in the whole league, sure, their roster wasn't great, but they had a young Kevin Love, Brian Al Jefferson, even Johnny Flynn in his best season, and two of my all-time favorites, Darko Milicic and Ryan Hollins. Ok, that was a bad year, let's see what happens next year. 2010-11 NBA season, 24th in offensive rating, 27th in defensive rating, 10th in points per game, 30th in points allowed, the team was expected to win 24 games before the season and they underachieved, they won 17. In two seasons, Rambus won 32 games as the head coach for the Minnesota Timberwolves, that's like all time bad. The roster failed him. 
So he went quiet for a couple of years just so he can re-emerge like a phoenix from ashes in 2013 for who? Obviously the Lakers. The problem was that Phil Jackson wasn't the head coach anymore. Mike D'Antoni was. Kobe Bryant played in just 6 games because of the injury and that's the right time to step up, galvanize your troops and be a respectable team, yet the Lakers won only 27 games. Seeing the Lakers as a whole that's damaging his reputation, Kirk Rampus goes to the Knicks to be the assistant coach for Derek Fisher. The first season, 17 wins. He matched his best result as the head coach for the Timberwolves, so he met his standards, all good. The second season, the Knicks are 23 and 31. God damn Derek Fisher, how can you underachieve so much with this roster? He gets fired. Kurt Ramba steps in and wins 9 of 28 games. That's 32.1% of his games folks, giving him the best single season winning percentage in NBA history. Uh, sorry for that, misspoke, in Kurt Rambis' head coaching history. I'm not head coaching this roster, says Kurt Rambis after the season and reverts to his position as the assistant coach. He helps his team to win 60 games in two seasons, not make the playoffs once in his tenure there, gets fired alongside Jeff Hornacek, now that's a sinking ship and of course, Kurt Rambis has nothing to do with it. So it's 2018. And you would think that NBA teams have had enough experience with Kurt Rambis to know that he shouldn't be put in such positions anymore and ever, ever, never and ever. So he's without a job in 2018, but wait. In September 2018, Kurt Rambis rejoins the Lakers as a senior basketball advisor. Kurt's wife Linda Rambis is the Lakers executive director of special projects and obviously is one of Jeannie Buss's longtime friends. Alongside Jeannie and Rob Palinka, the couple is described as a pillar of the club's four-pronged bank trust. Wow. LeBron James joins the Lakers, AD gets traded to the Lakers, and in the bubble season they have one of the best coaching staff and they win the bubble NBA championship and obviously Kurt Rambis is the senior advisor, so he gets one more NBA championship as an executive. So he's now a nine-time NBA champion. The Lakers suck bad this season and Kurt Rampus is basically in charge of the Lakers now. He's been suggesting starting lineups, he's been suggesting moves and he's been informing coaches of their job security. Well, because his own job is secure. A guy with a 28.4% winning percentage as a head coach, a guy who sucked in every basketball operation and every basketball managing, coaching or whatever job when he's not been with one of the greatest if not the greatest head coach of all time in Phil Jackson, that guy's in charge. Good luck Lakers. You suck this year. You will suck. LeBron is in the last years of his career. And until this guy is in charge of making decisions, or is not at least 50 miles away from a place where basketball decisions get made, the Lakers aren't going anywhere. Well that's Kurt Rambis guys, what do you think of his success? How great of an impact he is on the Lakers organization? Please leave your comments down below. Don't forget to like the video, share this video with others, who knows, Kurt Rambis might get another head coaching gig, and please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you very much for watching. This is Purple Prince and I'm out.